Welcome to Level Headed Mind. I'm Giselle Rosa, a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills of Roach. Well, we all know that exercise is great for mental health. In fact, I dedicated an entire video on how exercise treats depression. And if you missed that, I advise you go ahead and check it out. So exercise can reduce anxiety and depression and improve mood and self-esteem. But have you ever felt like the standard workout advice just isn't working for you? Or maybe your friend finds peace in the long runs, but you end up more stressed. Or perhaps those high intensity intervals leave you feeling jittery while yoga calms you right down. Well, the truth is that not all exercises work equally well for everyone, and our genetics may actually be the big reason why. So in today's video, we're going to explore the role of the ACTN3 gene to better understand what exercises may be best suited for you and your mental health. So stay tuned. So the ACTN3 gene produces a protein called alpha-actinin-3, found almost exclusively in fast twitch muscle fibers, so the ones that are responsible for explosive power and endurance. And there are three main types of ACTN3 variants. The RR variant, which is two copies of the R allele, are for strong fast twitch muscle function, which is great for sprinting, weightlifting, and high intensity burst. Then there's the RX variant, which is one R and one X allele, which is a blend of both the fast and slow twitch trait. And then you can have the XX variant, which are two copies of the X allele, which means that your body doesn't produce any of the alpha actinin three protein. Instead, your muscles are dominated by slow twitch fibers, which are ideal for endurance activities and lower intensity movement. And an interesting fact here, about 20% of people are XX, meaning they have no alpha actinin 3 at all, but they are often better at sustained activity and even have greater cold tolerance because of how their muscles can generate heat. So if you're XX, it doesn't mean that you are weak. It just means that your body is built for different movement patterns. But when you ignore that, your body will let you know. And sometimes, so does your mood. So let's talk about Act N3 in your mental health. And here's where it gets interesting from a mental health perspective. So individuals with the XX genotype are more prone to exercise-induced muscle damage and slower recovery, especially with intense or higher impact workouts. And this can trigger chronic stress, increased cortisol, and even worsening of anxiety or fatigue. Now the RR types may actually thrive on quick intense bursts of exercise, which when matched correctly Directly can boost dopamine, increase motivation, and even improve executive function. Now the RX types often fall somewhere in between and are considered flexible, but still need to be mindful of overtraining. So in other words, the wrong exercise for your genotype may feel like punishment instead of therapy. So let's look at a case example. We'll call her Alyssa. So Alyssa was a high performing realtor in her 40s with a history of anxiety and insomnia. And she was told by a fitness coach to go ahead and start a CrossFit program to build grit and boost her mood. But after just a few weeks, her symptoms actually got worse. Her sleep tanked and she had daily headaches, increased muscle tension, and was so irritable at home. So when we reviewed her genes, Alyssa was actually ACTN3 XX, endurance type. And so CrossFit was overacting her stress system. And so once we switched her to yoga, walking, light strength circuits, and occasional swimming, everything changed and her energy returned her sleep improved, and her mood actually became more stable. You see, her body needed rhythm, not rush and power. So here are some red flags that your current workout may be actually working against your mental health and possibly against your genetics. So you might start feeling more anxious after intense workouts. You may be more mentally foggy or irritable for hours after working out. Your sleep may worsen despite doing everything right. You may start dreading workouts, even if you used to enjoy them. Your recovery time is slow or workouts leave you feeling wired 
but tired. So if any of these sound familiar, it might be the right time to rethink your fitness plan through a genetic lens. And so let's talk about what you should do instead. So if you are ACT N3, XX, or endurance type, you want to stick with moderate intensity rhythmic movement. And great options could be cycling, swimming, hiking, Pilates, and even power yoga. You want to avoid frequent max effort, weight training, or HIIT style workouts. You want to focus on consistency and recovery to lower cortisol. And don't be afraid to move slowly because your brain will thank you. Now, if you're ACT N3 RR, the power type, your body actually responds well to those bursts of high intensity. So you want to try weightlifting, sprinting, that HIIT workout, jump training, and short power based workouts but just ensure you have adequate rest between sessions to avoid burnout. Because the RR type may find that exercise actually increases mental sharpness, motivation, and focus. Now, if you are the ACT N3 RX mix type, well, mix it up. Alternate power and endurance based days. Your mental wellness will actually thrive on this type of variety. And so listen to your mood and energy because your body will actually guide you. But let me tell you, ACT N3 is not the whole story. You see, your ACT N3 is just one piece of the mental exercise puzzle. So ACT N3 is critical, but other genes will influence how exercise affects your mental wellness too. And so let's briefly explore these. The ACE gene, which focuses on blood pressure and endurance. So if you have the deletion genotype, this is more suited to short, powerful bursts of activity so quick workouts will actually energize you. But if you have the insertion genotype, you're naturally better at sustained endurance and longer workouts are beneficial for stress reduction. Then let's look at the adrenaline response gene or the ADRB2 gene. So if you have the sensitive type, you're prone to feeling anxious from intense workouts and you may prefer calming exercises like yoga or moderate cardio. If you have the less sensitive genotype, then high intensity and competitive sports will actually energize you, boosting your mood and mental clarity. Another gene, the NOS3, looks at nitric oxide production, which affects circulation and oxygenation. So if you have lower nitric oxide production from a variant in this gene, you may feel sluggish at the start of workouts. And so slow warmups and nitrate rich foods like beets, leafy greens can actually help you. Now, if you're more prone to higher nitric oxide production, then you naturally experience better circulation. So moderate exercises will actually quickly boost your mood. And then there are the other mental health genes like BDNF, COMT, and MTHFR. And I have videos on all of those. And if you missed those, go ahead and check those out. But your BDNF gene can actually help regulate how exercise improves brain plasticity. And those who are MET carriers may actually benefit from regular, moderate intensity movement like brisk walking or dancing, but not necessarily benefit from intense exercise. Now, when looking at the COMP gene, which controls your dopamine breakdown, fast COMP activity types may need movement to burn through those stress chemicals, whereas slow COMT types can actually become overstimulated with high intensity exercise. And then other genes like MTHFR, IL-6, and TNF, these genes can actually modulate inflammation, neurotransmitter production, and your detox pathways, all of which will affect how you feel after you exercise. And ignoring all of these can actually leave you spinning your wheels or worse, worsening your symptoms while you're trying to heal. And so why does all of this matter? Well, because trial and error is exhausting especially when your mental health is already fragile. So genetic testing can actually tell you which workouts will support your nervous system and not fight against it. Genetic testing can also help you recover faster and build resilience and also reduce the risk of injury or emotional burnout and clarify whether you're undermining your progress with the wrong routine. Like for example, if you're dealing with burnout, insomnia, or anxiety and your act N3 BDNF and COMP all suggest low stress tolerance, then a 45 minute spin class could actually do more harm than good. But a 20 minute strength training or nature walk might be just what your brain needs. So this isn't about babying yourself. It's actually about working with your biology, not against it and using exercise as a targeted therapeutic tool 
for your brain and mental health. So if you've ever wondered, why doesn't exercise help my anxiety the way it helps everyone else? Or why am I so wiped out after a workout that was supposed to energize me? Or why does movement actually make me feel more stress? Well, then maybe it's not you. Maybe it's your genes and your genes are trying to tell you something. And at Level Headed Mind, we believe in a personalized, functional approach to mental health. You see, genetic testing helps give you the roadmap and we help you interpret it. And we use it to build a routine that heals and not harms. So if you're curious about your ACTN3 type and how it fits into your bigger mental health picture, check out the DNA testing packages below, link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe because next time we're gonna be talking about choline, the nutrient that most people overlook that actually powers your memory, mood, and methylation. And you might be low and not even know it. So as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.